Hey guys, what's up? This is Stephanie. I have another video for you guys. So there's a question that I've been getting a lot in my comments. So I wanted to address this question and it's basically about anatomy. So how is your anatomy class? Is your anatomy class hard? What do you use to study for your anatomy class? You have a cadaver lab, etc. So I want to talk that about that in this video. So anatomy. So we took anatomy for one year. I actually just finished my second semester of PA school and I had anatomy for my first and second semester. Now it's not anatomy and physiology, it's only anatomy um, because you have your pathophysiology class where you learn about the physiology of whatever module you're going over and then the pathology also. So that's a separate class. But when it comes down to anatomy, you're literally just learning about anatomy. So for me, I can say that this was one of the classes that I struggled with, anatomy, both semesters. I was always in that low B range uh, where I was struggling to keep my grade up because I didn't want to get a C in that class. Even though it was a two hour credit class, it was really hard for me. Um, so anatomy, we had it once a week only. We had it on Wednesday and it was about an hour and 15 minute class and then during the week we would have our cadaver lab. So basically we do have real human cadavers where we go into the cadaver lab and you're able to visually see what you're learning in class in a real human body. So I thought that was very, very good and fantastic and great experience for me um, being able to have a cadaver lab. Now, not all P schools have cadaver labs. So that's one of the things that I stress is that when you're applying to PA school, and you really like anatomy, make sure that you also look and see that they have a cadaver lab because not all PA schools have cadaver labs and that was one of the reasons why I applied to the school I accepted to, which is the one I attend, was is that they had a cadaver lab. They have a cadaver lab. Now, um, interesting though, uh, at UTRGV, which is the University of Texas in Rio Grande Valley, it's in the Valley of Texas, they also have a medical school and the medical school does not have a cadaver lab. So we were really blessed to have a cadaver lab and be able to learn anatomy and be able to visualize it in real cadavers. Now, how was it divided? How did we learn it? So our first module is that we learned about the back. So we learned about the muscles in the back, um, the tissimus dorsi, etc. So our anatomy exams, basically, the questions that I remember is that they would ask you, um, you have a patient that came in and they were stabbed in the back, what muscle was was hurt? So you had to learn, know whether it was the trapezius, the latissimus dorsi, etc. I mean, the muscles were fine, but when it came down to the nerves and the arteries and the veins, that's where I really, really struggled because there's so many of them guys and in PA school you learn a lot of them a lot and it's in a very small amount of time and you learn them in class and you see them in pictures but when you see them in a human body it's completely different for me they literally look like noodles everywhere and it's really important to try to orient yourself so we have, like I said, our anatomy exam, which is our written exam. We have written questions like the example I just gave you. And then you have usually the following day. So we would have our anatomy lecture exam on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, we would have our lab exam. So our lab exam is where you go inside. They have the cadaver bodies and they basically will tag a certain artery, a nerve, or a muscle in the body, and you have to look at it. You can't touch it at all because you don't want to move it for the student behind you. So you basically have to look at it, and not only look at it, you have to orient yourself and see where the vein is, where the artery is, because if you orient yourself in the incorrect position, then you're going to put the wrong answer, which is what happened to me multiple times so many times guys and so this was what was really difficult for me was the cadaver portion and it's not multiple choice so you have to literally write in the answer um, we have 40 questions and you have to make sure that you are writing not only the correct answer but it, that it is spelled 
correctly. And then when it came down to the limbs, that was really hard because you had the um, extensors and then you had the flexors. And for example, you have the extensor carpi ulnaris, you have the extensor carpi radialis, radialis. So these names sound very similar. And for me, it was specifically if I'm really nervous before I take the exam, they started getting jumbled up in my mind. And that's why I really struggled in this class, guys. So. Uh, that's just something I wanted to talk about, just basically how my anatomy class was, how um, my experience was taking it. I'm really happy that we had a cadaver lab because I can say that I was able to visualize everything I learned in a human body. So we were also able to dissect on these uh, patients. We call them patients because they are patients. They're human beings like ourselves who were willing to donate their bodies so that we could, as students, learn and learn anatomy. And it was just a really, really good experience, guys. So for those of you who want this experience, I really recommend for you that, for those of you to, who are applying to BA school to make sure that, you know, the your anatomy class does have um, an anatomy cadaver. Because like I said, not all schools have this. Some schools have either books, electronics, etc., cetera, um, but not an actual cadaver lab. Um, of course, we would come out and you would smell like formaldehyde because of all the chemicals that are being used to make sure that these the bodies are clean, that they don't decompose. So it was really interesting, specifically on some patients if they had certain cancers. It was really interesting to see what cancer does to a body so or an organ. So that, that was really really interesting um, so yeah that was just my experience in anatomy now how did I study for anatomy uh, memorization is the key guys uh, memorization and also learning to orient yourself I what I would do first is specifically when it came down to the nerves and arteries is that I would look at pictures and try to make sure I knew where the trail was because it's basically like a train right you just follow the trail and it will lead you to a certain way and sometimes this trail will split into several trails once you know the trail then I would go into the cadaver lab and then make sure that whatever I learned in pictures I was able to place it on a human body and be able to visualize it and see how it starts for example from the neck and it goes down the axillary nerves the brachial nerves um, etc. where it splits, um, what artery it comes from where it splits because they can ask you questions in multiple ways. So they can ask you, okay, um, which artery, what is the artery here? You can say it's a brachial artery, but they will not ask you wh what artery it is. It'll ask you, okay, well, where does this artery split from? What artery, where does this artery or nerve originate from? And so this is where these questions were very difficult because if you don't know where that nerve or artery or vein comes from, it's very difficult and it starts getting jumbled up. You'll get the wrong answer. Another thing for me was trying to distinguish the veins from the arteries from the nerves. I had a hard time my first semester. I finally learned it because they look completely different. But sometimes I would look at it and I'm like, ah, that looks like a nerve. That looks like a vein. And they're not like in pictures because in pictures, Anything that's blue, you know, is a vein. Anything that's red, you know, is an artery. Anything that's white or yellow, you know, is an, a nerve. But in the body, you know, they don't look like that. They look elasticy. They're usually white, if not white, it's like a pale white, and that's why that's why it would really, really confuse me. So that's why you really have to know your stuff. Some of my classmates would actually draw. And I actually did that for learning the arteries and nerves is that I would draw it over and over again until I learned it. But some of my classmates would take the step further and draw the muscles and the organs. That way they, it could get stuck in their mind. Also, another thing that I used for anatomy was YouTube videos. YouTube videos were very, very helpful for me. Very helpful for anatomy. Armando Hasurigan is great when it comes down to anatomy. Lecturio has uh, some free videos for medical students that I use that really help me out in anatomy and also an app called Atlas 
Um, it's an app where you're able to manipulate the body um, and see the organs when you're able to, for example, um, remove certain layers of the body, like certain muscles, and you're able to orient yourself. So I also use this for learning anatomy and it really helped me out also because orientation is really the key guides and learning where these arteries and nerves, which was, which was what I struggled with originating from. I didn't really struggle with the muscles, but it was the arteries and nerves that got me. Specifically when you come down to the head, to the brain, and to the limbs, it's just, it's, it's, it's out of this world, guys. And so I really recommend this app. I'll probably do a review about it for those of you that are interested in purchasing it. I think I paid like 20 bucks for it. It's on the Apple Store and they have different ones, but um, this one I really recommend. This one I really liked. And usually during the summer, they're offer, they're, they'll offer specials. I remember it was like $2 last summer and I was debating on whether I was gonna buy it or not and I didn't buy it and I'm really upset about that because then I decided to buy it, but it was during the fall, like at the end of the fall semester, and it, the price had gone up to $20. So make sure that you look for that. Usually during the summer, um, they'll de decrease the prices. That way you can purchase that, because two bucks for that app is not bad at all. And I used it on either my iPhone or on my tablet, I mean, I'm sorry, my iPad. So I really, really recommend this app also. And then of course I used Google a lot for the pictures and um, my book also I referenced it this is what helped me PA school and it's it's all about visualization being able to visualize where the organs are where the arteries are coming where the muscles are um, the joints are etc because when they are asking you questions for your lecture exam they'll ask you questions like I said you got stabbed on you had a patient that came and it got stabbed on the side on the ninth to twelfth rib what artery may they have ruptured or what organ may have been compromised, etc. So it's really about being able to visualize where the organs are in your mind. It's really that critical thinking which is going to help you out in PA school. All right guys, I will stop talking since I have been talking a lot. This was just my experience in my anatomy class and hopefully uh, my tips and just my experience help you guys out. I will make another video talking about what I used for my anatomy class. Alright guys, thanks for watching my videos. As always, if you guys like these videos, please give them a thumbs up, um, leave a comment below, or subscribe to my channel. And as always, stay motivated guys. Thanks guys, and I'll talk to you guys in the next